back to the Matrix Path in your commentary with me, Scully the Metalhead. Today we're going to be doing the lobby shootout scene, one of the more iconic scenes out of the movie actually, and uh, well, this is where the game gets good, as the kids usually say. Now, for those of you who need context as to what's going on, well, allow me to fill you in. Yeah, Morpheus got captured, Cypher betrayed us all, uh, Dozer died, even though you don't really see him in this game, and, well, everything's gone to shit, so we're going to go off and rescue Morpheus, and yeah, that's about it. Now, um, you'll notice a new thing in the heads-up display, and that will be the Morpheus icon. Uh, what this is is a time limit, and uh, basically what happens is that if you if the uh, timer is in the red zone, basically you got to hurry up before time runs out. Now, um, in spite of the fact that the time limit might seem threatening, I'm going to spoil one thing right here for you. It isn't. The time limit is purely artificial and is only ever reserved for the end of the stage, which, um... It will only ever give you like 20 seconds to actually reach the end point of the mission, and that only counts for two of these missions actually. Uh, the third of which is actually a special section in which, well, I'll explain more when I get to it, but yeah. It's pretty awesome source. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, we're going up against more secu- um, bloody swap pe- no, they're not swap people, they're fucking, uh, military guards. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to call them, I mean... Uh, they're not soldiers, because there's like a specific enemy type uh, later on in the game. They're not SWAT just yet, and we'll, I think maybe the uh, guy with the headset on, you know, the guy with the uh, other health bar on the adjacent to Trinity's. Yeah, but I don't know. And, um, one thing I do want to comment on, actually. Um, a lot of the, well, a lot of the Path of Neo does use Don Davis's score, or at least small portions of it, like the Dern, and Dern. But, um... Yeah, they don't use Spy Break for this point, which was the uh, one of the more famous songs for the, from the uh, movie soundtrack, actually, which is kind of saddening to see. I mean, I guess it could just be a case of um, Shiny not wanting to pay all the royalties to the different artists who uh, made the soundtrack for the first Matrix movie, but again, you know, that's, ki that's kind of bullshit, because the soundtrack to the first Matrix movie, which I actually own, it's fucking awesome, man. Like, you've got the Deftones, you've got Lunatic Calm, uh, Spy Break and all that, it's just... Yeah, it's just got some killer tracks, and it's a shame that they didn't use any. I mean, even Enter the Matrix, uh, for as bad as it was, had a couple of tracks of its own, you know? It had, like, Cell Dweller, Evanescence, uh, a couple of other tracks, actually, and, uh... Matrix Throw... You know, this looks like a sort of shot that you'd use in a trailer, although it doesn't really look that impressive. Uh, probably might have done... Back in 2005, even though this game looks more like a Dreamcast title than anything else. I, I, I say that, but in, in all honesty, I think that uh, the Matrix Path Neo, graphically speaking, looks decent enough, but there are just some aspects of it which look... Well, it certainly dates the game, but... I don't know, a lot of it just looks like a, just looks like a high-textured Dreamcast game with, like... I don't know. And even then, this is on the PS2, which I'm pretty sure, um, graphically speaking, was actually weaker than the Dreamcast, but, uh, that's if you want to really get technical here. <clears throat> Excuse me so much, I have to clear my throat because... I don't know, actually, my throat is very clear. Did I just say... uh... Fuck it, I'm... I'm recording this off a bloody... Uh, caffeine hive, <laughs> you couldn't notice. But we're nearly at the end of the stage, but that's not all, because we're doing two stages in one today. It's like a double action thing. And I, uh, this is what I mean by the artificial time limit. If you don't reach that in 20 seconds, you're done. But aside from that, it's all artificial for the time limit. Now for the next portion. You know, I'm pretty sure most military guards wouldn't just stand there while somebody just walked up and beat them up. I mean, I forgot, dude, you have a clear... Uh, Look, I know it's a video game and I shouldn't really be questioning things like this, but dude, like, you could just easily shoot them, you know? Heck, we should put anyway. I think you guys all know what's coming up. It's Agent Brown, I Holy think. Human. And thus, Neo charges up, and we get probably the most iconic Matrix ability ever. And we get the bullet dodge. In order to perform this move, just hold L1 and press the square. Well, hold down the square button, actually. Now, um, a quick bit of history, actually, from uh, my experience playing the game. Uh, back in 2005, when I first got this game, I owned the PC port of the game. Now, I did not know how to do the bullet dodge in that version, and I'm pretty sure that was a 
shift and control in order to do the bullet dodge. Yeah, I had no idea how to do it, so I killed the agent via an alternative means. Now, um, in order to kill the agent without doing the bullet dodge, basically you gotta either throw him off the building or, um, find, find some sort of electrical source to, uh, electrocute him, really. I don't know why electricity hurts him like that, but hey, I'm not complaining. But, um, instead of just having a one-on-one -on -one fight with the agent, you basically just... It's kind of it's kind of just padding, really. Like, you're just fighting off a bunch of goons, uh, the agent will possess one of them, and essentially what happens is uh, the agent will possess one of them, you're going to kill him a couple of times, and then after a certain point you'll eventually have to destroy the attack helicopter. You didn't have to do any of that in the movie because, well, it was just kind of the iconic scene where Neo dodges bullets, and shortly thereafter he learns that he doesn't have to. And, um, in terms of... Actually, no, that's pretty much all there is to this mission. I kind of used up all my anecdotes. I, I guess I could go back to the whole topic about the, uh, the music from the first movie, which... Again, a lot of the soundtrack of this game I do enjoy, personally. I mean, I would prefer a few more hard rockin' tracks, uh, similar to, you know, the movies themselves, but... I don't know, like, a lot of the music they use as a replacement for it just feels kind of... Lackluster and generic, like, I mean, the, my one specific example that's uh, shown in one of the movie cutscenes actually is one, because again, you know at the end of the, well, for those of you who don't know, at the end of the first movie where Neo's just like, I know you're out there, whoa, and he, um, uh, hangs up the phone, then Rage Against the Machine starts playing, and they play the song Wake Up from, I think it was their 1999 album, yeah, that's basically one of the, more, that, well, that's one of the iconic scenes of the movie, that's, that's probably not saying much considering the fact that most of the Matrix is iconic in some shape or form, but anyway. Uh, yeah, what they use in place of that is just some generic, uh, rock, which sounds kind of like it, but not really. It lacks the energy and also Zach DeLaRoche's vocals, which really add the intensity to the song, in my opinion. And again, you know, it's just something that... it feels emptier. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some tracks in this game that I really do love, especially some of the ones by, um, uh, Junkie XL and, uh, uh, Juno Reactor, actually. Those are some... those are some bitchin' electronic artists, man. You know, you know, you know, just to continue this off-topic tangent, I, like, again, for those of you who follow my channel, I am mostly a metal guy, admittedly. <laughs> Not that that's really f hard to figure out, but, um, yeah, my second sort of music genre that I can say that I love is a lot of electronica, particularly drum and bass and, um, agrotech, like, uh, Combi Christ and all that sort of thing. I also have a real love for, uh, ambient techno, like, that shit is just, like, fucking good, man, you know? It's, it's droning. Uh, I could go on for hours about it, but I, I, you know, I might as well go on about it, because there's really not much else to go on. It's just kind of a wash, rinse, repeat with this sort of boss fight. Um, damn, I have no Matrix trivia to back me up this time. I could talk about the Animatrix, though I don't really know what to talk about. Um, I guess I could kind of talk into the fact that I'm pretty sure all forms of the Matrix media is canon to the movies. Like, um, well, I'm not really so sure about the comics, but I'm pretty. But the Animatrix, the um, Enter the Matrix, uh, t uh, well, uh, the Enter the Matrix, the Matrix Online, the Animatrix. And I'm pretty sure the comics, maybe. Yeah, I'm, they're all canon to the movies, unlike a lot of other material where it's usually just like a non-canon ent entity, you know? And the weirdest thing about it is, it really does add a whole sense of depth to the Matrix movies, you know? Because, like, in in the Animatrix, like, the first shot you see is Final Flight of the Osiris. That shows uh, the crew of the Osiris delivering a package, which is then followed up by Enter the Matrix on the first mission, in which you have to get a package which was delivered by Thaddeus. Uh, you know what, never mind. The cutscene has happened. I'm gonna shut up now. Although, th that cutscene does have a funny glitch, which I'll point out in a second. Freeze! Down on the floor! Now! Trinity! Only human. We don't need this.
We're not done yet. Okay, look, I know I have a rule about not talking during cutscenes, but this this is one thing that I really want to bring up. Why in the ever-loving fuck does Neon just not jump into the helicopter with Trinity? He just stands there like a fucking dumbass, just going like, Ooh? You know, and then Trinity... And why does Trinity... Why, why does Trinity just fucking fly off? That makes... That's really only there for... I, I, I'm... S uh, excuse me, I was kind of distracted by a police siren that's just passing by my neighborhood, but... Uh, anyway, why the hell does Neo... Why, why the hell does Trinity just take off and Neo not jump in? Uh, but anyway, this is going to conclude this part for the Matrix part of Neo. Though, one thing I do want to ask you guys before I head off. Um, do you guys want me to talk during cutscenes? And uh, if so, yeah, I just want to know that. Because, there, I, again, I don't have a lot of snarky commentary, but um, I don't know. I just want to know if it bothers anybody. Because I know some people prefer uh, talking and some don't. But uh, anyway, I'm Skelly. Keep a new metal and uh, see you next time in the Matrix part of Neo commentary. See you later. Matrix code!